Hi everyone. Welcome back to a Finn River Forum. And once again, my name is Bernard Isibantin in Atlanta, Georgia. And as I begin in all my presentations or my video, I ask you if you haven't done so already, subscribe, share with friends, families, relatives, all kind of people you know, acquaintances, associate, let them know what you learn about this particular form. You know, it may be something I have uh, pretty much, uh, you know, it's counted. I have a lot of videos, you know, so far by 16 or, you know, 17, wherever, or 15. At least there may be one or two you may like. So tell your friends, trying to persuade them, tell them why you think this particular form is very informative, uh, educational, you will learn something. You know, we talk about geopolitical issues, uh, cultural, economic, everything, even relationship. You know, I'm not expecting, but at least I have some idea. It's about one or two, you know, things about relationship, intimate relationship, man, between, you know, couples, whatever. So sometimes I talk about that. I talk about all kind of issues. So, uh, but basically my area of specialization, as somebody want to know that you talk about Russia and uh, geopolitical issue all the time, well, most of the time, yes, because it's my area of speciality. In other words, you may, let me just give you a little brief about my a little bit about my academic background. Maybe I have a bachelor's degree in communication and media studies right here in the United States, you know, uh, and then I have a, I have my master's degree in international relations, how nations interact, you know. So when I, I talk about how countries interact with each other, how you know nations would deal with each other, I pretty much know what I'm talking about. I have a master's degree international relation with you know concentration in United States um, national security affairs which is you know part of international relations it's the same thing you know political science same thing and then uh, currently I'm a PhD student doctorate degree in almost done in international relations too with emphasis on United States uh, foreign policy so when I talk about how nations interact with each other or how nations, you know, deal with each other. I pretty much know exactly what I'm talking about. So it's not like I'm just talking in a gibberish or talking anything. I pretty much have an idea at, at a PhD level about, um, you know, how nations, uh, international relations. So basically that is what it is. So those of you who, you know, comment or want to know what I know about international, that's what it is. I have. I'm a PhD student in international relations, and I've been teaching here in the United States for the past nine years, you know, at a college level. You know, so my, one of my former schools where I used to teach is uh, University of Phoenix, Atlanta, you know, branch or Atlanta campus. You know, I don't teach there no more, but, you know, so that is what it is. So last week, I talked about how Ukraine or Russia-Ukraine crisis, or Russia invasion of Ukraine can easily turn into a third world war. And I gave pretty much a little scenarios, you know, options, you know, some of the routes, some of the reasons that can lead to that scenario, that unfortunate, which nobody, it's a, we don't want, nobody want that to happen. At least I don't want that to happen because if you learn, if you understand how Today, countries have acquired lethal weapons, you know, in the form of uh, atomic energy or nuclear we energy, nuclear weapon. You don't, this, that's the one last thing you want to think about, about anything that will involve a global or a world war. You know, we, are, we were lucky in the first world war there was no nuclear weapon, like I said. Second World War II, yeah, there was pretty much technical. There was no nuclear um, weapon involved, except that you know United States was attacked in 1941 by Japan, and Japan was one of the Axis forces, which is uh, uh, it was comprised of Japan, Germany, and Italy. Those are the you know the Axis they called Axis forces, and so. Japan, you know, with it imperialistic uh, um, overtures or um, policy attack, 
United States in 1941 at the Pearl Harbor. And so in 1941, so United States developed. At that time, Japan was strong. You know, combined with Germany, Germany was a very strong one of the major powers, you know, in the world. So United States was a little bit, you know, afraid. And, uh, you know, they have every reason to be afraid. So that was the beginning of nuclear uh, arm race. So United States developed nuclear weapon and in 1945, they were the first and last country to use nuclear weapon on another country. So United States used it on uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan in 1945. And right after that, you know, uh, nuclear bomb, Japan surrendered because they realized that what that energy, that kind of bomb can cause the havoc that energy or that bomb can cause, uh, you know, is unimaginable, uh, you know, it's unthinkable. So they have to, so since then, countries, the world over realized the devastating impact of nuclear weapon. And so the United States, again, led the world about initial 44 countries, allied countries, and created the world uh, order, international order. And that include uh, United Nations. And that's where they have the International Monetary Fund, which is IMF, World Bank, and all kind of stuff just to help those countries who were going through economic turmoil as a result of the Second World War. And so those are the uh, reasons we have those institutions, we collectively called Bretton Woods Institutions, you know, so it was uh, formed in that area in uh, New Hampshire, United States, you know, area called Bretton Woods, it's a, you know, some kind of uh, area in New Hampshire where United States and other countries, more than 44 countries together and formed those institutions that include uh, IMF to help foster economic sustainability of countries that are going through a lot of uh, economic uh, uncertainties and turmoil. So that's what it is. So so after that, after that um, atomic bomb, you know, the world realized how serious, how scary, you know, destructive that bomb can, you know. So since then, nobody. But since then, again, a lot of countries have acquired nuclear bombs. A lot of countries have acquired nuclear bomb and uh, one of them two major two major nuclear bomb nations nuclear weapon nations are united states and russia together both of them have or close to about four thousand or five thousand nuclear warheads and that's a lot you know and if you want you know uh one kiloton of nuclear bomb can uh, destroy a major city such as Los Angeles or Atlanta or New York it can just destroy almost the whole, the whole place, just one. And so it's not a kind of weapon that uh, anybody, like I keep stressing, is if, if you study, re you research and uh, read a lot about nuclear bomb, you find out how deadly that particular um, bomb energy is. So it's not something anybody should mess with but um so that's why i keep talking about it and i'm not saying i know everything about it because uh you know i'm a phd student in uh, international relations how nations japan russia united states even ghana nigeria deal with each other that is not i'm not i don't have all knowledge about everything but i pretty much i, I learn i'm a student of international relations so I pretty much follow uh, the nuclear uh, culture or nuclear arm race. But anyway, so today I want to talk briefly about um, what happens if President Putin were to use nuclear weapon. The other time, the last segment, I talk about how United States, uh, the Russia, Ukraine, crisis can degenerate into a third world war but today i just want to back it up with you know just brief about what will happen if president putin were to use nuclear weapon and uh 
nobody should discount that because guess what? This fight, this Ukraine, Ukraine invasion started somewhere in February, I think 24, somewhere this year. It's almost about five months or six months. Right there in the first week when Putin launched that invasion, this is what I quote directly. This is what Mr. Putin said. Whoever tries, that is Putin, whoever tries to impede us, impede us means Russia, whoever tried to impede us, let alone create threats for our country, which is Russia and its people, must know that Russian response will be immediate and lead to the consequences you have never seen in history. That's Putin, exact quote. He said, if any country impede or trying to stop or trying to stand in the way of Russia in the course of what he is doing, invading Ukraine, what will happen is that their response will be immediate, will be fast, quick, and it will lead to a consequences or a result that the world has never seen before. If somebody said that, what does it mean to you? See, that's Putin said that in the early weeks when he invaded Ukraine. You see? So the point I'm making is we have seen wars. We have seen First World War. Even before First World War, there's so many wars have happened in this world. But no country has ever fired using nuclear weapons. And when Putin said that if any country trying to sabotage Russia or stand in the way of Russia in what they and what he put in and his army or people are doing, their response will be swift, immediate, and it can it will lead to the consequences the word or you have never seen or the hit in the history of a war nobody has ever seen before. So for me, what tells me is that in case his back is pushed to the wall, then he will have no option but to use a nuclear weapon. And so the question I ask that, the question for this discussion today is, what will happen if Mr. Putin were to use nuclear weapon? And these are scenarios that will happen. The chances are, see right now, United States and it allies, which comprises of the Western nations, NATO countries, are supplying Ukraine with all kind of conventional weapons to defend themselves. And so Putin, in his calculation, when he started the war in February, he thought, you know, going into Ukraine would be a cake walk. Within weeks, a week or two or three, Ukraine will fall under the mighty weight of Russia. But it's not happening. See, so, if this keep on dragging on, like I said in my address, if this keep on dragging on, that Ukraine will keep resisting because they have support from the Western nation. They have arms and killing a lot of Russians, just like Russians are killing Ukraine. And get to your point, right? There's a chance that Putin will probably use a nuclear weapon. And that is what that is what my fears are. That he'll be tempted to use it because then what is the point of having it? Because one, Putin see himself as somehow like a Peter the Great, <laughs> second Peter the Great. And he loved his country so to the point that there's no way for Putin, the only victory is for Ukraine to surrender or to run over Ukraine in their own terms, in Russia's own terms. And so, if that is not happening, and there's another means that can quicken this particular, or that can achieve this result or this conclusion, what do you think will happen? So that is what my fears are. Say, so what will happen? And that is what will also draw United States. It's just a probability. Either United States will mobilize the world and condemn Russia, in no uncertain terms, right? About the use of either tactical nuclear weapon or some kind of, you know, some uh, full-scale nuclear weapon, wherever 
Putin decided to do. So the United States may condemn Russia and probably impose more, stricter, more sanctions on Russia. Or maybe one of the nuclear bombs or whatever can touch or can hit any of the NATO member countries like Estonia, Latvia or Lithuania or Poland and you know all those countries that are close to uh, Russia and so if that happened then you see that article 5 of that NATO that says that attack on one of the members is attack on all will, will, will have a very crazy impact devastating impact on the whole or will change the whole world dynamic in in that area so like i said is we all have to keep our finger crossed because if putin the scenario what will incentivize uh putin to use nuclear weapon will be when it get to a point that ukraine keep resisting and ukraine is fighting like crazy and somehow ukraine use a missile and hit any of the russian cities or anything of that sort and putin calculate his losses and realize that you know he is at the receiving end of the of the uh, of the conflict then he may be forced to use it and like i said if you use it think about it britain has a nuclear weapon too and britain is a member of nato france is a member of nato it has nuclear weapon too United States has it too, you see? And then another, so so all these countries, Germany may not have a nuclear weapon, but they are very powerful force. Japan is also there. Australia, other country, it, Italy is also there. So it's, it's this war that is going on in between Ukraine and Russia, it's, it's very, very scary. It's just like a booby trap. It's very, anything can happen. And so my point is, I'm just, keeping my finger crossed and also praying that it doesn't degenerate into something unthinkable. So that is what I have for you today. And I'll talk to you another time. Thank you.